Dear learners, I am Trisha Dora Bora from the Bhupanasirka School of Mass Communication, Krishna Kanta Hennig State Open University. And I would like to cordially welcome you all to another online video class on mass communication and journalism. In today's class, we are going to discuss about the relevance of traditional folk media. This particular unit belongs to the paper Traditional Folk Media from the third semester being journalism and mass communication under Krishna Kanta Hamid State Open University. This is the seventh unit of this particular paper. In this unit, we are going to talk about and discuss about the traditional folk forms in rural India, its impact on rural development, and its different uses in different fields of life. So after going to this unit, you'll be actually able to appreciate the impact of traditional media on rural development and also list the various traditional folk forms in rural India as well as discuss the different uses of traditional media in different fields of life. Now, what exactly is traditional media? As we have already discussed in a previous uh, video classes, traditional media is nothing but their indigenous channels of communication for expressing the local customs and beliefs as well as social, moral and emotional needs of the people within a particular community. And its nature is very lively and actually corresponds to the changing time pattern. So for the past, you know, 50 or 60 or maybe 100 years, uh, tradition folk forms have been used on a wide scale in different parts of the country, both in rural areas as well as in urban areas. And it definitely acts as a vehicle for disseminating the information to the masses. And as we all know, India is a huge country, and so definitely we have a very rich variety of folk forms, and it includes different combinations. And folk forms have been different combinations of drama, there have been different combinations of dance, of songs, on music, on storytelling, on puppetry, on different mimes, and so and so forth. And usually when we talk about the different tradition folk forms in India, basically we can classify them into five categories. There are the folk theatre, there are the folk songs, the different narrative forms like ballads, different folk tales as well as other storytelling forms and religious discourses and puppet shows. Let us try to analyze these different five different categories one by one. So first one we have the folk theater. Now when we talk about folk theater it actually doesn't mean something that a drama taking place on a wide scale or you know a theater taking place where it is uh, there are a uh, stage has been prepared, there are lights, there are different props are used. But that doesn't only serve, you know, encompass only that. There is more to that. And each reason in the in this particular country, like it may be any one any kind any region in the north, any region in the south, or any region in the east or west, they have their own distinctive style of presentation as well as uh, where the different issues are addressed pertaining to that particular region. And whatever the case may be, there is one common thread that actually binds the different regions. And that is usually borrowed largely from the classical Sanskrit theatre. And one important very common feature among all these different regional forms is the presence of the Sutradhar, uh, which literally translated is known as stage manager and the Vidushak, that is a narrator or the buffon, under different names and guises. And then there are other features of folk theater that are borrowed from the classical theater. Like we have the stage preliminaries, there's invocation at the beginning of the start of the folk theater, or uh, there may be a benediction at the end of the performance. There will be different stylized movements, there will be use of different props, different masks, there will be like, you know, prominent makeup will be there. So all the, these are different features of the, you know, folk theater form. And when we talk of folk theatres, they usually perform in an open space. Okay, it's not just something, it's, it's confined to a very closed room or indoors uh, that is usually seen in the dramas in the present day context. But when we talk about folk theatre, it's the, the very special characteristic that is performed in an open area, open space or open ground, uh, which like 
through which the di- the different performers they can actually be in contact with the audience who might be sitting in the open area okay so this is just like having a kind of connection with the audience so the audience can actually be able to understand the different nuances of it the different uh, you know areas on which the particular folk theater is based on so that connection is actually felt in as far as folk theaters are concerned and when we talk about the contents what exactly constitutes the different folk theater forms so basically these different theater forms are based on mythology as we all know and of course on different legends on romances and other other secular themes as well now let us try to look into the different varieties of regional folk theaters of india okay we we'll just try to you know uh, discuss in a very concise manner because uh, in detail you will be able to understand different varieties in your own respective uh, study materials it's been given in a proper way but in this particular class we'll try to you know briefly examine the different uh, folk theater forms the regional folk theater forms uh, i th- I'm, i'm sure most of you have heard about jatra now this is one of the most important regional folk theater forms of india and it's uh, you know it's it's a characteristic is a main folk theater from bengal though it dates back to 15th century uh, jatra became very much popular in 18th century and uh, basically this particular folk theater form is uh, it grew out of the bhakti movement and the initial themes were exclusively very religious in nature and towards the 19th century it started containing the humors and social political comments on contemporary themes uh, a jatra troupe basically consists of an adhikari okay adhikari uh, which is equivalent to the sanskrit sutradhar and jury jury basically it's a team of singers who are very much well versed in singing different classical songs which actually interpret as well as elaborate on the songs of the main character so jatra is one of the most important variety of regional folk theaters of india and it's it's a main face of the west bengal then we have nortanki nortanki uh, is usually associated with uttar pradesh and it is very much popular in the city of kanpur uh, lucknow and hathras and not only up not only uttar pradesh it is also performed in certain small villages certain pockets of punjab haryana and rajasthan and in nortanki the performance when we talk about the performance it actually begins with a traditional invocation okay which is followed by the chaubolla chaubolla is it's a song that is performed by the ranga that is sutradhar after which this particular play is performed then coming to the eastern part of the country we have the bhavana uh, which is a presentation of the onkya nat of assam and bhavana it, it gives a kind of you know cultural glimpse of assam as well as of bengal odisha mathura and brindavan so the sutradhar he he or she actually begins the story in sanskrit language and then either in a uh, brajawali or an assamese script he recites the different shlokas he sings he dances and recites the different prose and uh, apart from the sutradhar in a bhavana troupe there are the the bhauriya that is who are the actually the actors who plays the role of different characters then the gayan gayan they are the usually the singers and bayan bayan the, the musicians who plays <coughs> you know the cool tal from the beginning to the end of the play and uh, it was actually bhavana was written by uh, shrimadha shankardi who is uh, one of the renowned vaishnavite saints of this part of the country then we have tamasha tamasha is among the important you know regional form of you know folk theater forms of the country and uh, tamasha is uh, very much popular in maharashtra uh, usually uh, tamasha it consists of invocation there is a gaulang that is a song on the theme of lord krishna and the milk me then the lavanis uh, that usually consists of narrative poetical compositions okay and so and so forth then we also have Uh, that is known as therukuthu therukuthu is a folk theater form of tamil nadu uh, which actually means street play and uh, it's mostly performed during the you know mariamam festival that is a rain goddess festival uh, which is celebrated in tamil nadu 
and usually this particular festival is celebrated to achieve a very good harvest because it's usually believed that when there is very good rainfall that will actually lead to a very good harvest so it's usually performed at that point of time now let's come to folk songs so we have tried to understand what exactly is folk theater that these different uh, you know region varieties of folk, most um, only the important region you know varieties of folk theater forms now let's come to folk songs now just like folk theater india also has a very rich tradition of folk songs uh, which are very much diverse in nature because of of the cultural as well as geographical you know diversity and every region every state you know every nook and corner of the country they have their own distinctive particular style of folk songs it's not that you know uh, assam has folk songs and, and then the bihu folk song of assam is applicable to other states as well no different states they have different folk songs which one can actually identify you know with the different meanings different contents of what the folk song is all about and uh, sham parmar he is one of the very renowned you know uh, folk artist of uh, the country uh, a person who has actually uh, extensively done research in area of you know folk media he has categorized or he has classified the folk songs in three different types first is the bhakti songs is a very from the term itself you can make out they are devotional songs which has very strong links to the classical music and then of course we have the ceremonial songs uh, which are very much seasonal in nature and uh, it's all related to different rituals different books different other love songs and so on and so forth and finally we have the tribal songs okay now for example let me talk about tribal songs we have the the ball the ball of bengal the garba of gujarat then ghumar of rajasthan we have bihu of assam so these are some of the tribal songs then let us come to another important you know category of uh, tradition folk forms that is a narrative forms so from the term itself the narrative narrative talks about how you narrate a particular story how you try to narrate a particular song you know in the form of different verses in the form of different you know poems and so and so forth mostly ballads and uh, narrative forms they have been actually used to spread the message of patriotism something of you know uh, related to the country's nationality to unite the people something to bring about reforms in the country uh, both at the national level and the regional level as well as the local level something related to you know bringing about a societal development something related to some cultural as well as economic issues so narrative forms basically and um, you know uh, brings under its umbrella this different aspects of life now there are different narrative forms which are very popular in the country uh, let us try to you know briefly examine a few important one of them the first of course with the bura katha now bura katha is actually performed in the mostly in the villages of andhra pradesh as well as telangana by a three member troupe in a particular troupe in a particular group there are three people are there and uh, this particular troupe consists of kathakadu that is the, the principal performer who actually dances and recites the story and the rajkia is there who actually acts as someone who knows the different ways of life and draws analogies between the story and the contemporary uh, socio political problems okay then moving on we have another important narrative form that is a dasakathya now dasakathya is a very popular narrative form of orissa and usually in this particular form in this particular troupe in steam there are only two people are there one is a gayaka that is a singer and the other is the palya that is a accompanist and the way the things are sung the all the way the things are narrated it's in a very different it has a very stylistic stylized way it is done like the theme is drawn from mythology from different folk tales and from other famous battles as well and it's not only there are singing is performed of course there is very humorous kind of interludes in between uh the skits are there then proverbs anecdotes these are all you know part and parcel of the performance and uh, there are also other narrative forms like we have the alha uttar pradesh we have the 
ನಾಗಲ ಪಂಜಾಬ್ ದನ್ ಏನು ವಿಲುಪತ್ತು ಆಫ್ ತಮಿಳ್ನಾಡು ಪೋವಾರ ಮಹಾರಾಷ್ಟ್ರ ಏನು ದೇರ್ ಅದರ್ಸ್ ವೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಫುಡ್ ದೇವ್ ನಲ್ಸ್ ಕಮ್ ಟು ಅನದರ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಯುನೋ ಕ್ಯಾಟಗರಿ ಆಫ್ ಟ್ರೆಡಿಷನ್ ಫೋಕ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಎಸ್ ಅ ರಿಲಿಜಿಯಸ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ನಾವು ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ದ ಟರ್ಮ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಮೇಕ್ ಅ ರಿಲಿಜಿಯಸ್ ಓಕೆ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಸಮ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಯುನೋ ಯು ಟ್ರೈ ಟು ನೆರೇಟ್ ಸಮ್ ಸ್ಟೋರೀಸ್ ಇನ್ ಸಾಂಗ್ಸ್ ವೇ ಯು ನೋ ದ ಕಾಂಟೆಂಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಡ್ರಾನ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ದ ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಚರ್ಸ್ ಯು ನೋ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಅ ಸಮ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಡೀಪ್ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಲೈಫ್ ಆರ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಸೊಸೈಟಿ ಆಸ್ ಅ ಹೋಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ರಿಲಿಜಿಯಸ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕೋರ್ಸಸ್ ದೇ ನೋಟ್ ಬೈ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ನೇಮ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಕಂಟ್ರಿ ಲೈಕ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ದ ಹರಿ ಕಥಾ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ದ ಕಥಾ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಕೀರ್ತನ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಪ್ರವಚನ್ ಓಕೆ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಯೂಶ್ವಲಿ ಇನ್ ಸಚ್ ರಿಲಿಜಿಯಸ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕೋರ್ಸಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ದ ಮೇನ್ ಪರ್ಫಾರ್ಮರ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ಕಥಾಕಾರ್ ಕಥಾಕಾರ್ ಹಿ ಹಿ ನೀಡ್ಸ್ ಟು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಗುಡ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಚರ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ದ ಕಥಾಕಾರ್ ನೀಡ್ಸ್ ಟು ಪೊಸಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಗುಡ್ ವೆರಿ ಸ್ಟ್ರಾಂಗ್ ಮ್ಯೂಸಿಕಲ್ ಎಬಿಲಿಟಿ and he should also be a very good storyteller because you know if someone is you know just narrates some kind of story without giving any kind of you know uh, uh, meaning to it then obviously that won't make any sense so there is narrating a storytelling is also an art which the kathaka needs to have okay and also the kathaka needs to have a very good uh, first hand knowledge of the local customs because you know uh, obviously if someone goes to a particular place and narrate some you know kind of stories then the 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 concerned person needs to know about different local customs without you know kind of hurting the sentiments of the people so that that knowledge has to be there then there is another category of you know tradition folk forms which is from the puppet shows now we are very we are very aware of we have actually grown up uh, seeing the different puppet shows all across the country even we have also personally visited we have seen some puppet shows live in front of us so puppetry is nothing but it's just an ancient form of performing art uh, which is very much you know uh, integrated or which is very much you know uh, integral to the performance arts heritage of india and uh, you know we have seen numerous references of puppet shows of puppetry uh, in most specifically in the two epics that is the ramayana and the mahabharata they have spoke volumes about the different uh, nuances of puppetry in the country and the uh, puppet performances they of course they're very important way of trying to reach out to the general public as a whole because uh, when the uh, when different social messages different social issues and concerns of the people are being demonstrated through the medium of the puppets so people generally feel a kind of connection to that so that adds a kind of you know uh, humorous to it it adds a kind of you know uh, a certain reality to it so there are, there are a lot of angles to it okay the sort of main objective of any kind of puppet show is that it address the different social issues as concerns of the people as well as it's since it's a integral part of the heritage of the country so people are they they get attracted to it people feel that such kind of issues which highlight their own lifestyle which highlight the society in which they live it actually indirectly it helps the people to understand the development process in a better way so people the there is a need of holistic development and that can actually be achieved through this different you know folk media forms and puppet show is one of them now when we talk about the puppet puppetry as as a whole of course there are different types uh, we have the globe puppet we have the rod puppet we have the string puppet as well as the shadow puppet now from the name from term itself we can make and when we talk about globe puppet globe puppet basically you know mostly it's seen in the states of orissa kerala and tamil nadu and it's very simple in nature and uh, you know basically uh, it's uh, gloves are worn by the puppeteer in his or her own hands and the puppeteer try to manipulate you know the head of the puppet with the index finger while the arms are manipulated by the thumb and the middle finger so just with the hand of hand movements you know different uh, issues are being shown uh, that, that is how glove puppet tries to bring up those issues in front of the people then of course a rod puppet is there which is mostly uh, found in west bengal and uh, basically uh, such kind of puppetry is manipulated by using very three main big rods 
uh, switch where one of the rods is held at the back of the puppet, the other the two rods attached to the hands of the puppet, and then the puppet is being moved, and uh, you know through different nuances, through different hand movements, through different hand gestures, and you know movements, uh, different issues are being you know shown in front of the people. Then of course we have the string puppets. String puppets basically they are you know they are being suspended by strings, and there are different multiple joints are there and uh, usually loot their such puppets and the manipulating techniques or the size or the shapes and costumes uh, differ from region to region okay it's, it's one kind of uh, it's different in the state of delhi it will be different in the state of bengal so from different regions they have the different ways of you know uh, kind of uh, different techniques are being used to showcase the different issues to the string puppets and of course with the shadow puppets basically um, the two di two dimensional figures and uh, they usually illuminated with a very you know, there is strong light sources there behind the puppets which actually cast a shadow and with the help of the shadow you know uh, the different issues are being raised the different issues and two different movements are being shown and these are very much popular in andhra pradesh in karnataka mostly in the south indian states then uh, let's try to understand these are different this weather so far we have tried to understand the different traditional media folk forms different categories we have the folk theater with the folk songs we have puppetry we have religious discourses and narrative forms and all these are some different uh, traditional media folk forms uh, as as far as rural india is concerned